Welcome to Bizarre Boulevard, where we like to look into the strange and uh, unsettling sometimes corners of the animal kingdom. Uh huh. Today we're talking about animals that can survive without their heads. At least for a little while. Yeah. It sounds like science fiction, but it's a reality for some creatures. Yeah, and it really makes you question what it means to be alive. Yeah. Um, let's start with probably the most famous example. Mike the Headless Chicken. Oh, yeah. He lived for 18 months. Back in the 40s. After a botched beheading back in the 1940s. Yeah, how is that even possible? How did he survive for so long? Well, in Mike's case, the axe blow missed a very crucial part of his anatomy. Yeah. His brainstem. Well, and the brainstem is responsible for regulating essential functions like breathing heart rate and basic reflexes. So even though he lost a significant portion of his brain, right. his brainstem was still intact, and that allowed him to carry on. Precisely. In a sense. Yeah, it's a testament to the power of the brainstem and how even without higher brain functions, some animals can persist. So Mike's case is definitely an outlier, but you've probably seen other chickens running around after decapitation. Oh, yeah. That's because nerve impulses can still trigger those movements for a short time. That's right. It's fascinating. A little unsettling to think about. Totally. Um, are there other animals that can do this headless trick without a lucky axe swing? Well, insects, for example, are masters of decentralization. Okay. They have a unique nervous system that's spread throughout their bodies instead of one central brain. They have clusters of nerves called ganglia oh. that can control basic functions independently. So each part of their body can basically react on its own, even without a head. That's right. Think about cockroaches, for instance. Yeah, you can never kill them. Their ganglia allow them to keep moving and even respond to stimuli like touch or light even after their heads are gone. Which is why they're so hard to kill. Exactly. How long can they actually survive without their heads? Decapitated cockroaches can live for weeks. Really? Yeah, it's pretty remarkable and it's not just cockroaches. Um, other insects like flies, praying mantises and wasps also exhibit this ability. Okay, that's both impressive and a little terrifying. Mm -hmm. Are there any other surprising examples of headless survival in the insect world? You might be surprised to learn that headless wasps can still walk, groom themselves, and even fly. No way. Yeah, they rely on their ventral nerve cord, a major component of their nervous system that runs the length of their bodies to coordinate these movements. So it's not just simple reflexes. They're actually carrying out complex actions, even without a head. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a great example of how diverse and adaptable the animal kingdom is. It definitely gives me a newfound respect for these tiny creatures that I usually just try to swat away. Right. Let's move on to something a little less creepy crawly, but no less bizarre. How about octopuses? Okay. Those brainy cephalopods, can they do the headless thing too? Octopuses present another fascinating case. They have nine brains, one central brain, and one in each arm. This distributed nervous system allows their arms to operate with a degree of independence. Nine brains. That's amazing. So if an octopus arm gets severed, can it still move around? Yes. A severed octopus arm can continue to move and respond to stimuli for up to an hour. It can even grab objects and perform other tasks as if it were still attached to the body. So even though they have a central brain, their arms are still remarkably independent. Right. What are the evolutionary advantages of this kind of system? Well, think about their environment. Octopuses live in complex underwater habitats where they need to be able to explore crevices, hunt prey, and defend themselves. Right. Having eight arms that can operate semi-autonomously makes them incredibly efficient and adaptable. So it's like having eight little multitaskers all working at once. Yeah. Which makes sense given the reputation for intelligence. But wait, if a severed arm can still function, what does that mean for the octopus itself? Uh -huh. Does it feel pain or experience any kind of sensation in that severed limb? That's a difficult question to answer definitively. We can't know for sure what an octopus experiences, especially in a situation like this. However, we do know that cephalopods, including octopuses, have complex nervous systems and are capable of learning and problem solving. So it's possible that they experience some level of awareness, even in a severed limb. Mm -hmm. It really makes you think about the nature of consciousness and how much we still don't know about the animal world. Absolutely. The more we learn, the more we realize how much there is still to discover. And sometimes those discoveries come in the most unexpected forms, like a headless chicken or a detached octopus arm. I know, right? Nature finds these incredible solutions to impossible challenges. But let's not forget about the dangers that come with assuming decapitation renders animals harmless. I'm thinking about those stories of people getting bitten by severed snakeheads. Yeah. Are they true? 
or are they more like tall tales? Those stories are true, and they serve as a cautionary reminder about the resilience of certain animal nervous systems. While snakes don't survive decapitation in the same way as cockroaches or octopuses, their heads can remain active for a surprisingly long time. So what keeps their heads going after they're detached from their bodies? No. I mean, how can they still bite and inject venom without a heart pumping blood to the brain? It all comes down to their unique physiology. Snakes are ectotherms, which means they rely on external sources to regulate their body temperature. As a result, their metabolic rate is much slower compared to warm-blooded animals like ourselves. So they require less energy overall. Right. And their brains can function for longer periods even without a constant supply of oxygenated blood. Exactly. Even after being severed, their brains can remain active for minutes, even hours in some cases. Wow. This means a detached snake head can still sense its surroundings, react to threats, and yes, even strike and inject venom. That's a sobering reminder that even a seemingly incapacitated snake can pose a serious threat. Yeah. It makes you wonder, are there other ectotherms that exhibit similar headless survival? There are some remarkable accounts of turtles and tortoises surviving for extended periods without their heads. These animals are known for their incredibly slow metabolisms and long lifespans. I remember reading about a tortoise that lived for months without its brain. Really? And even longer without its head. Wow. Are there any truth to those stories? There's a historical account from the 17th century describing a tortoise living for six months without its brain and an astonishing 23 days without its head. No way. While these accounts might seem far-fetched, they point to the incredible resilience of these animals. That's wild. It's mind-boggling to think about their ability to persist even without such vital organs. Is there a scientific explanation for this extended headless survival in turtles and tortoises? Their slow metabolism likely plays a crucial role. They require less food and oxygen to sustain their bodily functions, allowing them to endure even in extreme circumstances. However, the exact mechanisms behind their prolonged survival without heads remain a mystery. It's incredible to think about the limits of their resilience. Do we know if their movements are purely muscle memory or is there something more complex going on? That's a question that continues to intrigue researchers. While we can speculate about their internal state, we can't definitively say what's driving their behavior in such a situation. So it's like they're tapping into some ancient survival instinct, a testament to their evolutionary history. Indeed, their ability to withstand such trauma highlights the incredible diversity of life on this planet and the remarkable adaptations that have evolved over millions of years. Yeah, it certainly challenges our assumptions about what it means to be alive and the resilience of the natural world. Speaking of resilience, are there any animals that can not only survive without their heads, but also regenerate an entirely new one? There are some incredible examples of regeneration in the animal kingdom. The axolotl, a type of salamander, is a prime example. Axolotls are famous for their regenerative abilities, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They can regrow limbs and tails, but can they really regenerate an entire head? While they may not survive complete decapitation, their regenerative powers are truly remarkable. They can regrow limbs, tails, parts of their hearts, and even portions of their brain. So they might not be immortal in the truest sense, but they come pretty close. Right. It makes you wonder, what are the limits of their regenerative abilities? Scientists are still exploring those limits. Their capacity for regeneration has fascinated researchers for decades, and they hold great promise for understanding tissue repair and regeneration in other species, even humans. That's incredible to think about the potential applications of such knowledge. Yeah. Are there any other champions of regeneration that can match the axolotl's abilities? The planarian flatworm takes regeneration to an even more extraordinary level. Not only can these flatworms survive being cut into multiple pieces, but each piece can regenerate into a whole new worm complete with a head. So you're saying if you cut a planarian flatworm in half, you'll end up with two flatworms. Precisely. And this process happens within days. Wow. Each piece will regrow all the missing parts, essentially cloning themselves. It's like a superpower that makes them practically invincible. That's both fascinating and a little unnerving. What makes them capable of such incredible feats of regeneration? Planarian flatworms have a rem Oh my gosh, so the ants are walking around without brains like little zombie ants. Exactly. They wander aimlessly controlled by the parasite inside them. Eventually their heads fall off, but for a while they're living a truly bizarre existence. So it's not really headless survival in the sense that the animal itself is controlling its body but it's still a remarkable example of parasitism and manipulation. It is, and it highlights another fascinating aspect of the natural world survival, often comes at the expense of another creature. It's a reminder that nature can be both beautiful and brutal. Speaking of brutal, 
Those forward flies sound straight out of a sci-fi horror movie. Yeah. How did they even evolve to do something like that? It's a fascinating example of co-evolution over millions of years. The forward flies and the fire ants have developed this intricate and, as you said, gruesome relationship. So the flies have adapted to target the ants specifically. Are there any other examples of such targeted parasitism in the animal kingdom? There are countless examples of parasites evolving highly specialized strategies to exploit their hosts. It's a constant arms race between the two, with each trying to outmaneuver the other. Wow. It's incredible to think about the intricate connections that exist in nature, even between creatures that seem so different. Those connections are often more complex than we realize we've talked about headless survival, but it's just one small piece of a much larger ecological puzzle. It makes you want to keep exploring, to keep asking questions and uncovering the hidden wonders of the natural world. Yeah. Are there any other animals you can think of that exhibit bizarre adaptations for survival? Yeah. You know, there are so many strange and wonderful creatures out there. It's amazing how much diversity there is in the animal kingdom. Mm. But speaking of strange creatures, we talked a lot about how these headless animals managed to survive. But I'm curious about the experience itself. What do you mean? Well, like, what's it like for a chicken to run around without its head or for a severed octopus arm to keep on grabbing? Can we even begin to understand what that experience might be like? That's a fascinating question and one that's difficult to answer definitively. We can observe their behaviors, study their physiology, but ultimately we can't truly know what it's like to be a headless animal. Right. I, I guess it's like trying to imagine what it's like to see the world through the eyes of a bat or smell the world through the nose of a dog. Exactly. We're limited by our own human experiences and perceptions. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we can't speculate. Sure. We can't use our imaginations to try and bridge that gap. So if we were to put on our speculative hats for a moment, what might it be like for, say, a headless cockroach? Okay. They can live for weeks without their head, so something must be going on in those little bodies. Based on what we know about their decentralized nervous systems, it's likely that a headless cockroach is still experiencing the world in some way. They're still reacting to stimuli moving around, even grooming themselves. So it's not like they're just completely shut down. Right. It's possible that they're experiencing a kind of sensory awareness driven by those ganglia throughout their bodies. Maybe it's like a fragmented consciousness, each part of their body responding independently. It's kind of mind-boggling to think about like a hive mind, but within a single insect. Exactly. And who knows, maybe it's not as unpleasant an experience as we might imagine. Maybe in their own way, they're content to just keep on keeping on, even without a head. That's a fascinating perspective. It makes you wonder if there are any lessons we can learn from these headless wonders. You know, I think there are... They're not dwelling on the past. They're not worrying about the future. They're simply existing in the present moment, responding to their immediate environment. It's like they've achieved a state of Zen, even in their headless state. Perhaps, and maybe there's a lesson in that for us humans who often get caught up in our own thoughts and anxieties. Maybe we can learn from the cockroach to let go of the things we can't control and embrace the present moment. That's a really good point. It's like a whole new perspective on headless survival. It's not just about the physical mechanics. It's about a different way of being. Precisely. And that's what makes this topic so fascinating. It's not just about the strange and unsettling. It's about challenging our assumptions and expanding our understanding of what it means to be alive. Well, we've explored the bizarre world of headless animals, from the scientific explanations to the philosophical implications we've learned about resilience adaptation and maybe even a little bit about mindfulness along the way. And hopefully we've sparked some curiosity in our listeners, encouraging them to look at the world around them with fresh eyes, appreciating the incredible diversity and strangeness of the natural world. Because as we've seen today, even in the absence of a head, life finds a way from all of us here at Bizarre Boulevard. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, stay curious.